scripture said, when you pray, whatsoever things you desire, put the scripture back there for a minute. Let's look at it. Let's look at it together. Mark eleven twenty four. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray. Now, you want that McDonald's. You want that, that, that Big Mac with no sauce. You want that Big Mac fries drink. When you pray, when you say it, believe that you've received it. Because if you don't believe you receive it, when they say drive up, you're not moving. Do you have it in your hand? The minute you are that big man, do you have it in your hand? You ordered it. You still in line. Do you see it? If you say, God, I want a car. Do you see it? No. You saw it before you asked for it. Amen. You desired it. You described it. You drove up. He said, what is your order? You said, Lord, I want a green car. Amen. When you pray. Not after you pray. Understand it now. When you say it, you have it. It's going to hit you like a ton of bricks in the middle of your sleep tonight. When you Pray. Now, if you don't believe you'll receive it when you pray for it, nothing's going to keep you in that line. Somebody asked, Pastor Rush, so can I keep asking God for the same thing over and over again if you don't believe you have them? Sure you can. But let me see if this makes any sense. So you go to McDonald's. And they said, um, now have you ordered? You said, yeah, I want a Big Mac, fries, and a Coke. They said, okay, drive through. You go, okay. You go around the block. Welcome to McDonald's. Now have you ordered, please? Yeah, I want a Big Mac, no sauce, fries, and a shake. Okay, drive through. Okay. Welcome to McDonald's. May I have you all please? Yeah, I like a big... Why is this person constantly going around? Because they don't believe that they have his order. If you believe they have your order, you're not going to keep asking for it. Some of you are asking God for the same thing over and over because you don't believe and therefore you hope you don't receive it. Well, is, it, is it wrong for me to keep asking God for the same thing? It's a sign that you don't believe he received it. So what am I supposed to do? Why don't you thank him while you're waiting? Yeah. Have you ever sat in line and go, ooh, when I get these fries, ooh, Lord, I can just taste them, ooh, when I get my Big Mac, nobody better not ask me for nothing. You talking to people in the back seat, don't ask for nothing. I just... Do you keep ordering? Do you keep ordering? To keep ordering is an indication that you don't believe that God answered or that God heard it. I've been asking God for a house for 12 years. That's why you don't have it. Because you're still asking and you're not believing it. You might ought to spend next year thanking him for it. And thank him five or six years straight. Because it's your house. It was on the menu. He gave you the desire. Now he's got to get your income right. He's got to make sure your finances are right. He's got to make sure that your background is right. God's not going to give you a house that you're going to waste in five minutes and tell somebody God gave it to you and stole it from you. God's getting it together because you don't want a raw Big Mac. It's got to cook. Tell somebody and say, God is cooking my thing. Whatever your whatsoever thing is, God's fixing it. 
but you got to know it's yours and get in line. Listen, once you've already made the connection, you can always add to your order. Now here's where the intellectual misses it if you're not careful. Because this is his system. His system is a system called faith. You can search every Bible you can and download and Google and download. But if you don't talk to him, honey, this is making no sense to you. You see, God loves people who can't read. You missed that. There are some people in here who can't read. They still deserve to order. There are some people in here who don't have degrees. They are still important enough to God to say, keep it simple. There are some children in here who can't research what the preacher says and try to find them wrong. They still deserve to have the desires of their heart. He says, the clown says, drive through. God says, if you believe you receive it, come get it. Now you're in your car and you just scoot up. Here's the part I talk about in the book. Some of you remember reading. Others have never heard and some of you forgot. This is the hard part right here. This is that waiting part. See, up until now, you have never engaged your faith. See, faith is the evidence. It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of what's not seen. The very fact that I'm still in line means I don't see it, but I believe it. And now, now you're in faith. Why are you still in line? Why are you waiting? Because you got a desire. You got a hunger. And you've already placed your order. But hear me tell you, this is right here, this waiting part. You ready for this? You'll order the CD. You'll, you'll get it. This waiting part. This is where your mother dies. Sorry. You placed your order, but while you're waiting for God to fill your order, maybe your mother dies, your father dies, your house burns down, you have your abortion, you have a miscarriage, you get a divorce, you flunk college, you try to commit suicide. What? Yes, I must tell you the truth. When you wait, you get attacked. The enemy says, get out of line. Everybody around you is dying. Everything is going bad, and you still don't have your order. While you are waiting, your faith is being strengthened. But sometimes your life is made miserable. The Bible said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew your mother wouldn't get to hear you preach a sermon, but I want you to know that I got her order. She wanted a son to be king. I don't know how much you will lose before you get what God promised you, but I got to tell you the truth. Some things are going to go down while you're waiting. It's going to go down while you're waiting. This is where you get put in jail. Wait a minute, I'm five, ten years in jail. Yeah, but I, I placed an order. Here's the key. See, all these things are going bad in your life while you're waiting. But do me a favor. Look back and see how far you've come. It's been hell getting this far. You're not where you need to be. But at least you've been moving. See, all the time you're waiting on God, you're still moving. You're crying. 
This is where you lose your job. This is where you get fired. This is where you get falsely accused. This is where you get all those things said about you. This is where folk down your character. All of this just because God said, move now. When you pray, believe it and you'll receive it. But he did not tell you that you would have it easy. He said, in this line, you will have trouble. This is track seven. But be of good cheer. This is where you had that surgery. This is when you found out you had cancer. Yeah. This when you gave birth to a child that has a disability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Pastor, that's horrible to say. This is a forecast. See, your, great, your latter days will be greater. You're gonna have whatsoever things you desire. But somebody didn't tell you that the minute you start walking in faith, the enemy knows if I can just get him or her out of line. This is where all your friends get married and have children. You don't. Right here. Right here. Right here. And all you have is a conversation with God. All he told you was to start moving. Is there anybody in this room I'm talking to now who understands this part, this part of having an order? Is there anybody who understands what it means to be held up, delayed, disappointed, discouraged, depressed? That's the second book I'm writing about, is that every once in a while, you gotta understand there's a time to break down. Oh, but there's a time to build up. Right here is where you break down. I challenge you sometimes, stick your head out the window and say, there's a bright sight. I promise you, God is not gonna let the restaurant close before you get your order. 